Hello students, myself channel. Let us discuss introduction to foundation. Before that, we already have understood the principles of geotechnical engineering as well as soil mechanics. Now let us go into foundation. Here in this chapter, it is a brief from foundation like what are the types of foundation, what are the basis of selection of foundation, what are the purposes of foundation etc in this chapter. Let us move forward. The lowest part of the structure below the ground level which is in direct contact with the ground and transmits all the loads to the ground is known as foundation of the structure or foundation. So let us move to purposes of foundation. So uh, its purpose is very fundamental to support the structure and help to transfer the load transfer mechanism because whenever the foundation is laid it will do what? It will transfer the load from superstructure to the subsoil. Distribution of non-uniform load of superstructure and it will distribute uniformly to subsoil means sometimes on the structure structure is uneven or loading is uneven on the structure but foundation will do what it will divide it and distribute it uniformly to the subsoil furthermore it will provide a level leveled as well as hard surface for concreting and masonry works masonry work means brick works concreting you know that to take structure deep into ground and increase stability. So it will also help to take structure deep into the ground. For an example, if you want to uh, make a minus three story parking like you see in the malls. If you want to construct a three story parking below your ground line, you can construct with the help of good foundation to prevent unequal settlement. So sometimes settlement happens after years so if the settlement happens foundation will make sure that it will uh, be an equal settlement not an unequal one let us move forward shallow versus deep foundation so let us understand shallow foundation and deep foundation so when depth of the foundation means its depth is less than or equal to its breadth of foundation it is known as shallow foundation where when depth of the foundation is greater than the width of the foundation it will be known as deep foundation furthermore bearing capacity of soil is more in the case of more bearing capacity of the soil and required soil bearing capacity means SBC is available at shallow depth if at the shallow depth bearing capacity is available I will construct shallow foundation and if bearing capacity is low as well as SBC which is required soil bearing capacity is not available at shallow depth you need to uh, dig to more depth then you will provide deep foundation if the structures load structures weight is less then you will provide shallow foundation if the load of the structure is more high then you will provide deep foundation so that the foundation can take the load when water table is low you will provide shallow foundation where if the water table is high you have to provide deep foundation so that the strength will be adequate top layers are uniform and stable when the top layers are uniform and stable you can use shallow foundation but if the top layers of soil are non-uniform and unstable then you have to go with deep foundation sometimes it happens that moisture content of the top layers of soils are high then in that case you have to use deep foundations deep watering is not required when you use shallow foundation where well, in the case of deep foundation Deep watering is most as well as deep watering is costly sometimes as well as difficult. Let us move forward to types of shallow foundation. Now 
let us discuss the two types. First, spread grouping, which is spread on some area. From the geometric in view, we can say it a spread grouping. Combined grouping. When your columns are nearby, you have to combine the footing underneath that. So that is a combined footing. Strap footing. When you construct a strap beam between two columns, there is a strap footing. A raft foundation. Sometimes on heavier loads, you have to uh, choose raft foundation and grillage foundation. In steel construction or composite construction, you have to move with grillage foundation. Let us understand them one by one. Let us understand spread footing first. In that wall footings. So here you can see one image. It is showing simple footing as well as strapped footing. Here in the first image A, you can see a masonry wall lying upon a foundation, and this foundation, this footing is known as spread. Same way, a masonry wall which is stepped in the figure B. It is lying on again a foundation that is a spread foundation. We can say that a wall footing. Same way, RCC footing may be there. Here in this image, you can see a column constructed on that. It is an RCC footing. When it will be used? Under or beneath the column. If there is a wall, you will use a wall footing. But if there is a column, you will be using RCC footing. In this, here you can see a reinforcement cage of the column and it is joined at RCC footing. Below RCC footing, sometimes plain concrete bed is also uh, laid because of ease of construction. Same way, uh, you can join a sloped footing. A slope footing like this also. Moving further, inverted arch footing. So, inverted arch footings here you can see a stone column and it is lying above a arch footing. Arch is made up of stone. We can use concrete also here, but inverted arch footings are mainly used for reducing depth of foundation. When it is in a soft soil and you want to reduce the depth of foundation, you can use this footing. But here at the end of columns, it must be a strong joint because it will have more reliance on this joint. Sometimes the failure of this joint is also observed. Moving forward, the spread footing, column footings which are isolated ones. Here you can see three images. Here there is a paired footing. In image A, column is lying above a flat or rectangle. It is a paired footing. Here you can see a stabbed footing column is like a stepped, right? So it is known as stabbed footing. The below images are showing plan, and this above images are elevation. In third case, column is in a sloped or chamfered or we can say tapered uh, shape that is a stabbed footing you can see it in the plan also so these are isolated footings or these are also type of column footings let us move forward combined footing so combined footing are of two types rectangular combined footing and trapezoidal combined footing in the plan you can see the below images in the plan, you can see uh, the rectangular, rectangular shape as well as in the plan here, you can see trapezoidal shape. Due to that, they are known as rectangular and trapezoidal combined footing. Basically, combined footing is a concept of what if the two columns are very nearby distances or they are weaker individually, you can use combined footing. And in combined footing, if you are joining one column with uh, if you are joining two columns with rectangle, it is a rectangular combined footing and otherwise it is a trapezoidal combined footing. When one column is weaker than another one, then trapezoidal footings are used. Strap footing. 
here you can see two columns are joined with a strap or we can say strap beam when two columns or two footings are joined with a strap beam they are known as strap footing raft foundation when the load is uniform and heavy you should prefer raft foundation in uh, tall buildings raft foundations are also used here you can see number of columns lying there and whole base is covered with rcc that is raft foundation it is also known as, known as mat foundation it looks like a mat on soil surface grillage foundation here you can see different layers of the foundation here this is rcc layer then or maybe a pcc above that there are girders or i beams of steel same way in the transverse direction on the upper layer there are i beams and then it is a connection provided to the column these box will connect to column with steel connections so in steel buildings or we can say industrial buildings grillage foundations are used these are very heavy foundations as well as costly foundations so let us move forward to selection of type of foundation so basically you should prefer which type of foundation and when so while selecting a type of foundation you need to keep things in mind like adequate depth now if you are choosing a single type of foundation you must think about adequate depth i mean if the soil bearing capacity is lesser you need more depth of the foundation same way if the soil bearing capacity is available and more at shallow depth you need no adequate depth you need lesser depth so this is how you decide its perfect depth second factor is bearing capacity failure sometimes you have to think as if bearing capacity is failed or if i have assumed as bearing capacity as 120 kN per meter square and if it is failed then what so you have to keep a factor of safety in the picture settlement you also you also need to think about settlement of foundation if the settlement happens in worst case scenario it should happen in a equal form same way fourth point leads to quality of construction if you are designing a single type of foundation you need to check the quality of the foundation too because if you have chosen a perfect foundation a perfect strength but if the quality of construction quality of materials is not perfect then it is in vain appropriate strength you need to design it with a appropriate strength sometimes engineers for cost saving they do design a medium strength uh, foundation like if the required strength is 100 kN per meter square they will design for 100 kN per meter square only you should design for more strength than the required one adverse soil changes sometimes adverse soil changes happens while earthquake or any hazards but you have to keep in mind also that if the in adverse case scenario if the soil changes your structure your building is stable enough to take that so these are the points you should understand while selecting a type of foundation and that's it in this chapter we will continue learning in the next video with a new chapter thank you